Well, I'm recording this video for my friends on LinkedIn, but uh, other people may see it. I just want to say hi and greetings during this COVID-19 slowdown. We don't even know what we're going to call it in the future. I, I nominate the great COVID-19 slowdown of 2020. <laughs> It'll never fit across a, a headline of any, of any sort. Um, we're all trying to make the best of a very uh, bad situation, uh, a grim situation. Many people have lost their lives. Um, many others have been uh, sick, infected, uh, suffered other hardships. Um, you know, when you can't breathe, it, it causes other types of problems. And uh, uh, when you can't breathe and you're not getting enough oxygen, that means your organs aren't getting enough oxygen. That we talk about things like renal failure and uh, other organs shutting down, uh, which is never a good report from the doc. Um, but fortunately, uh, I think we're going to get out of this. We've now figured out ways to flatten the curve if we can just uh, be disciplined enough to follow instructions and, and not be too righteous and not get back into the pool too fast. I think everything will be fine. Uh, and it occurs to me that there have been some unintended lessons from COVID-19, and I first blogged about these in a, a blog post of the same title, Unintended Lessons from COVID-19. You can find it online at uh, michaelangelocaruso.com. Uh, I wanted to share some numbers with you today, but what's the point? The numbers are changing every day, and today's information will be out of date tomorrow. The curve is not flattening. We are seeing some progress, but um, uh, much, much work to be done. It has occurred to me that what, the first lesson that we've learned is that fear, fear motivates, you know, uh, and this is true in business as well. When people understand that something is at stake or at risk, they become motivated to actually do something about it. And I remember, like most people, and I monitor the world news a bit, uh, being, uh, you know, uh, interested in, mildly interested in this thing happening in a place called the Wuhan, the central province of China. This was back in Q4 of 2019. And I remember thinking to myself, well, how isn't that interesting? Uh, there's been a cluster, an outbreak of uh, an unknown virus or an unknown illness in Wuhan. And, uh, you know, the Chinese, they, some of them have some crazy uh, cultural practices, you know, and they, they're cooking uncooked, uh, you know, bat intestines or whatever people were thinking back in the time. And by the way, books are going to be written about this. Nobody knows exactly what happened yet more information to come. But I remember a lot of people thinking, you know, that's a China. We don't have to worry about that. And then, then it was more than just a, a, a cluster or an outbreak. Um, they started issuing curfews. And I saw a photograph of an, a, a, a China street, a China intersection was completely empty. And if you know anything about the population in China, in, in Wuhan in particular, you'd never see empty streets, ever. But the government had shut it down. And, and like most people, I'm thinking, boy, you know, I uh, hope they get this figured out over there, you know. And then it was, uh, uh, then it was this uh, concept of it, people in China, it turns out, travel to other parts of the world and how contagious is this? And people still didn't worry, you know. And nobody had, all the leaders that tell you they had this figured out, none of them are telling you, telling you the truth. Because by definition, a novel coronavirus, novel means new, that means none of us have been through this before. And so for people to tell you that they knew exactly what to do, they're lying, right? And this is how it is in business and in life sometimes. We, we come upon these new challenges and it's all, it is take all of our problem solving ability to get through them, right? But righteousness is not something that's gonna serve us very well. And I'm reminded of that old adage, you know, we could see it coming a mile away, or you could see this coming 7,000 miles away. But the United States didn't take it seriously until we became fearful. And we became fearful when we started seeing people we know being sick. When the government issued, uh, or the World Health Organization talked about something called a pandemic. Because a lot of people think the word pandemic and panic come from the same source. Though they both, they're both Greek words. But pandemic, the word, the, the prefix, the, the prefix of pandemic, pan, just means all, right? Panic is a completely different word. It's named after a Greek god who got into a bunch of shit. <laughs> so uh, we heard pandemic, then went into panic. And when you're fearful, you start to take action. 
and the first thing people did was go buy toilet paper. And long after that, the government started issuing stay-at-home orders and shelter-in-place orders and that sort of thing, and businesses, non-essential businesses started to shut down. And these are the kinds of things that we started to see happen. So we also know that uh, from a guy by the name of Albert Ellis, he was a psychologist, that what we think about determines how we feel, and how we feel determines how we act. Uh, Albert's research was uh, called Rational Emotive Behavior Therapy, REBT, that link between what we think about, how we feel, and then how we act. And I think that's another unintended lesson of COVID-19 is uh, we, there was just so much misinformation about this thing. You know, if everything is predicated, your feelings and your action is predicated on what you think about, and there's a lot of misinformation, that means you're going to feel stuff that you don't necessarily have to feel, and you're going to go do stuff that you don't necessarily have to do because, because it's a chain reaction. And so now where are we? We're in all in this uh, slowdown mode, you know, again, a very unusual place, a lot of pent-up energy, and I've been looking for ways like you to not be uh, preoccupied with the problems and try to get through this in a kind of a calm, rational way. So I've been fascinated with the art of distraction, and I wanted to share a few distractions that I'm using now that I'm working from home, just like you, maybe. Uh, because uh, I think that's important. Our mindset is important as we slow down and get with the rhythm of this thing and, 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 and weather this out, right? Chomping at the bit and, and posting negative things and, and uh, aggression is not really going to be the answer to this. So here are a couple of ways that you can stay distracted moving forward. Number one, um, uh, and everybody's got their thing, right? But I've got a YouTube channel, and I've been spending some time curating that channel. I have nearly 700 videos now. Uh, it's easy to find, Michael Angelo Caruso channel on YouTube. And I found a fun little video that I recorded live in Biloxi, Mississippi. I'd kind of forgotten about it. But I like to play with my audiences, and I found two teenage girls uh, who were delightful, and they stood up and helped me um, uh, do a little segment of the program, and I interviewed them. And, uh, and the title of the video is, Your Mother Lied to You. And they, they just play this perfectly. And it was not a setup. You're going to watch it and think, well, he hand-selected those young ladies. Nope. It was all done in real time. And they're just that good. And humans are just that entertaining and that funny. So check it out. I think you'll enjoy it. Uh, another thing I've been doing, and maybe you have too, is learning more about my body and the immune system and how I can uh, become healthier. Because the COVID-19 situation has kind of taken advantage of people who ha have compromised immune systems, compromised respiratory systems. And I don't want to be that way again. So I've subscribed. It's a free Facebook group called Eat, Evolve, and Inspire. And it's run by Renee Pothetis, and she knows her stuff, and you should join it as well. It's been a nice way for me to divert my time. I'm listening to a lot of music, so... Uh, a good song for us during this time period is Paul McCartney's Distractions. You can find it on YouTube and listen to it. Put headphones on, a little glass of wine. You'll be perfect. Uh, and then finally, I'm old enough to have some photographs, old photographs of my family. And uh, I've been saying to myself for a long time, if I ever had a month off, I would digitize those photographs. You know, either take pictures of them or scan them. And then I'd have, uh, I'd have them in the computer and I could tag them out and all that kind of stuff. Well, guess what? I got a month off, so now I'm working on it. So these are the types of things that I'm doing to stay distracted. I think distraction is going to make the time go faster for all of us. I think you should do all the things your boss asks you to do at work during this slow time. But do not ruminate about the end of the world. Get your stuff in order. Keep, keep focused you know, to the extent you, that you can and put your time to good use. So that when it's all over, your biggest claim to fame won't be that you watched every movie on Netflix, right? Get healthy, write a book, develop a new skill. So more about this uh, on my website, michaelangelocaruso.com. You can go to the blog and see uh, all the links for what I just talked about. And I wish you the best post-COVID-19. Thanks, everybody.